Hey whiskey fam, so today we're going to be going over the ultimate guide to foddering or leveling your units up and to create rank up units. So after you do this, you're never going to need anything else. This is all in one. So we're going to cut the BS and get right to it. There are three units I just want to go over real quick. Those three units are Hell, Octavia, and Maya. So those are the three units that you get for free from the game. So Hell is here. She is important for most of the content um, and also for Novice Arena, but she is also your key to foddering early in the game. The reason why is because she has this counter spell. This counter spell means that she reflects damage. So when an enemy hits her, it takes her damage that she takes and then reflects it back at the enemy at a multiple level. So she is amazing. She will one shot most units and she pretty much is a one ball wrecking team. So if you use her, your units are gonna just be fine. And that means you can limit yourself to eight units that you can fodder. Now, later on, when you want to have more efficient foddering, there are certain units that you are going to get for free. The first is Maya. Everybody gets a free Maya. Do not fodder her. Many people have in the past and they regret it. That is a mistake. You will cry yourself to sleep. Octavia is the second one. She is also free. You get her. Do not fodder her. So the three units again are Hell, Maya, and Octavia. Do not fodder them. You need them. Very good. So starting off, the first stage I'm going to talk about is 25-5. The next one is 25-10. Then it is 26-10. And then it is 41-3. Those are the four major stages that I'm going to really talk about and get into. And there's a specific reason why. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to do it in order to not waste your time. Here we go. Now keep in mind, I'm gonna give you notes down below, so please check the descriptions for anything you might need to know. Um, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. Now here, I'm gonna start running it. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain why this works. So these wriggles are bombs. They hit, they die. The reason why you're in a crisscross formation is because looky, looky, if you get hit, nothing else dies. So beautiful. They all kill themselves by blowing up your units and then what happens is hell will activate she attacks very good activate so once she attacks the counter spell prox you know because there's a red shield she attacks again dies boom done so if she crits the enemy or boss will die automatically in one shot from his own attack if he doesn't not a big deal hell will just attack and finish him off very good so that's the first stage if you do this you will be fine. Now, next stage, 25-10. Why do I recommend this over 25-5? There's a variety of reasons. The first being, the later you get in campaign, the more experience you get. So obviously 25-5 is going to be much more efficient for foddering. Two, chance. So if you look here, there is no chance. But here, there is a chance for a normal scroll. Why is this important? You're going to learn very quickly that you are going to fodder a epic crap load of units. So if you want to create a rank six star unit, so you have a five star unit, a natural five star that you like, for example, a Foxy, and you want her to go to rank six, awaken. So in order to awaken her, you got to make her rank six. You're going to need five, I'm sorry, 600 of these scrolls. It requires 600 normal scrolls in order to create one rank six unit. So that's why this is important. By doing this stage, not only do you get the XP, but you also get the chance of getting normal scrolls. So that is why I recommend doing this specific level. So let's get right into it. This is actually the most efficient because it's faster than 25-5. You get normal scrolls, which you need 600 to create one rank six star unit. And two, your positioning basically doesn't mean squat. So let's run it. I always run the crisscross just out of habit personally, but it doesn't matter. Just leave them there, you're fine. Most of the units do not even kill at one shot. Now, that being said, this is normal. If you run them in hard, hard will give you typically three times the experience of a normal stage. So you can use hell at rank six skill ups. So if you have hell at six skill ups, she can achieve success in normal. Now, if you are 
looking to do it reliably, I recommend seven or up. Now, if you're trying to get hard missions done, you're going to need not only her at rank nine or skill up nine. So hell at skill up nine can do hell. I can do this 25-10 hard as well. But she is going to require two things. One is a good crit rate or f or a fatal rune. And two is a crit damage or rage rune. You're going to need them both so that she can then properly kill the boss. Other than that, everything else is exactly the same. So if you have a plus nine hell, at, you have one crit rate rune, one crit damage rune, then you're going to be able to beat the hard mode. So I'm not going to run it again because it's basically the same and it's a waste of everybody's time. So just keep that in mind if you want to do hard, okay? Now, the next stage I'm going to suggest is 2610. 2610 does not give you normal scrolls. It only gives you the random chance of getting Cordelia. I don't really care about her, so it doesn't matter. Let's get inside and see. The benefit of this stage is that obviously it's later, so you get more EXP. Again, same as before with 25-10. You get one hell and eight fodder units, and you are going to be successful. So let's watch. Again, I always leave it in the crisscross mode. You're getting attacked. It doesn't matter. They're literally just tanking hits. So as you can tell, hell is very safe. She has regeneration when she gets hit, and now she is going to attack. She attacks the random unit in the back. Boop. Proc the shield, reflect damage, everything hits her and dies. Very good. Good news is, unlike 25-10 hard, 26-10 hard doesn't require anything special. Just put hell in 8 units and it looks no different than normal. So hell in 26-10 is actually easier to do. And so every specific stage is different. Just because it's a higher stage does not necessarily mean that it is harder. So I'm going to review one more time just to be safe. You can do 25-5 with just hell, rank 6 or above I suggest. If you want to be reliable and never worry, do rank 7 skill ups and you're going to be good. Always do 25-10 because you get the random skill, or sorry, random normal scroll chance. And you need 600 for a rank 6 star unit. You can do 26-10 if you're just looking for efficiency on EXP alone and not the chance for a scroll. Moving on, the last stage I want to talk about, which is actually the most efficient stage, is 41-3. Let's go inside. The reason why this is the most efficient stage is because it is the easiest one to cheese. You only need two units, and both of which you get free, and both of which can be level 1, zero skill ups, unawakened and they will still work okay so I want to show you what this looks like this is 41-3 okay I'm gonna run it real quick and explain the situation this formation of the fodder is vital you must do it this way if not not so good okay so just stick to it obviously as you get better at the game you don't have to be so fast and hard on these rules but I'm gonna tell you just do it this way for your own peace of mind what happens is Octavia will charm these units and attack interference skill when she charms them they will kill each other Maya is going to then make sure they kill in the right order so I want to do it one more time just to make sure you understand retry so Octavia again will charm in an X pattern. When she charms the units in an X pattern, they are going to be the DPS units. The other units are primarily not DPS units. They are tank units. That's why they're blue. So again, if you look here, what does it look like? An X pattern. She charms the unit, but for a very short period of time. As you can see, the charm is only a few turns. Now, in this X pattern, these are the three units that you must charm. When she hits them, they, these units are going to attack all of these units here, the tanks. So why do you need Maya? Maya has a skip skill. She also makes sure that she changes the way these three units attack. So running it again, you're going to see Octavia hits first, then Maya. 
Always in that order. Octavia first, Maya second. Octavia first, Maya second. Octavia first, Maya second. And then look, everything melts and goes away. This works whether it is normal or hard. So once you get to hard, you can do it there and with the exact same unit at zero skill ups, level one, unawakened. And it works every time. Now, there are some concerns that you want to just make sure you keep in mind. That is, what type of fodder are you using? There are certain fodders that you must be careful of, specifically fodders that are going to have attack interference skills. What are attack interference skills? That is charm, blind, silence, freeze, and stun. Why do they matter? Well, this is a delicate machine. Do not mess with it. So, let's take a look. If I have a unit that has one of those skills, let's look for one. Do, do, do. Poison doesn't matter. If it has no skill, it's even better. Here, let's take a look at this. Boop. Okay, let's do that. If you interrupt their skills, you are going to be in trouble because the charm is a very limited period of time. So if you stun them or silence them, you're taking away that charm. Now it's frozen for a few turns. It has interrupted the charm and it will potentially stop this machine. Now, luckily it worked, but what if it didn't? Then you die and you get no experience. Let me show you how that is. Do, do, do. Let's see. Let's try it again. Da, da, da. <clears throat> so, to review, make sure when you're foddering units that if you're using a unit that has this ability to be careful. Because if you put them in your lineup, specifically in this pyramid shape, it potentially stops the progression that you need. So we're waiting. Okay. Let's see. It is frozen. All right. So at this situation, it still works. But trust me when I tell you, I've done it enough times where you're not paying attention and you randomly place them. If you have blind, freeze, stun, it will cause you problems and you will fail. Okay? So I'm not going to try too hard to show you the exact situation, but that's how it works. So do that and you're going to succeed very, very well in this game. Keep in mind that if you do it, if you want the maximum efficiency, do it on campaign or fodder day. If you do that, you get extra bonus. If you stack campaign day bonus XP, plus you use a experience potion, then they will allow you to do something very special. On 41-3, you will be able to then fully level a one star fodder unit in one run. So again, let me repeat, in single run on campaign day, EXP bonus with a potion level bonus for 12 hours, you can max your one star fodder units in a single run. So that is the most efficient way of doing it every week. Okay. So if you want to max your two star level units, it's two runs. So that is the benefit of 41 3. It is the king of kings among all fodder levels. So in under 15 minutes, you now know exactly how to fodder like a pro, and that's it. So 600 scrolls or 600 fodder units at one star equals one six rank star. Um, in my experience, in about an hour or less, depending on how efficient you are, you can fully rank up one six star uh, through this process in foddering. So if you do it for 12 hours straight, you can do 12 units. So that's it. I'm going to head out. Have a good one, guys. Bye.